And uh, so that's what I did. I, I have the teaching in my head and I have my own personality of of course, I, I don't try to be a pale copy of Van Brown. It's, it's, it's not really... I try but, to uh, you, you, mentioned, you mentioned all the big tunes about not. You mentioned a lot of the big tunes there. Uh, and, but it was also excellent at uh, uh, smaller tunes, uh, uh, too long in this condition, too hard. Of uh, course, to mention yes. too. And even smaller tunes like the Pretty Duck. I got mm -hmm. the Pretty Duck from the tunes with only one Ola and one variation. Uh, uh, Red Hector of the Battles. Um, we tunes that are scarcely heard because they are not complete. So they are not played in big competitions uh, because there's no tall one, no Krunwa. And uh, Bob Brown loved these wee tunes, and um, I, I got a few of them with, with them. And uh, yeah, you, you, men you mentioned Red H Hector of the Battles. I heard uh, Alan McDonald playing that once uh, many years ago on the uh, Radio Scotland Pipeline program. Uh, he gave a different slant uh, from any of the books, and they played it very lively and all the rest of it. Uh, I don't know, uh, uh, Alan's McDonald's say, uh, take on Peabrook is uh, totally different again, you know, uh, from the lights of uh, the more traditional uh, aspects uh, as produced by Brown and Nickel. Yeah. But I've been interested to know how Brown and Nickel would have played Red Hector the Battles. Well, uh, Bob Brown had a longer version of I read Hector of the Battle. He played a tune called Hector Roy McLean, which was a tune with uh, Tarwa and Krunwa. And the, the aura is almost similar that the Hector of the Battles with, with a few differences. And there is, it's a complete tune with Tarwa and Krunwa. And you can uh -huh. find it in, you, you will find it in William Ross's book, William Ross, Queen Victoria's Piper. 